really recognize government is in place, who's that has the confidence of governments, lenders, and our company, unquote. The United States government, which had previously funded the Afghan Mushardines involving Osama bin Laden against the Soviet Union, was willing to do business, along with U.S.-based energy corporations, with the Taliban to get the pipeline built. It was reported that U.S. representatives, in fact, told the Taliban, quote, either you accept our offer of a carpet of gold, or we bury you under a carpet of bombs, unquote. But the Taliban refused to accept U.S. conditions. The rationale of energy security became the reality of military conquest. We know what happened next. In Afghanistan, followed by Iraq, a war and occupation for oil based on smoke screens. Forty years after the Af Vietnam moratorium, and eight years after the start of the Afghan war, here we are again, faced with wars without end, massive deaths, and lifelong injuries to soldiers, here and civilians there. Millions displaced in the Middle East. The unraveling of what little is left of our social safety nets debt and deficits pay for said wars and occupations, and a legacy, if not continuation, of torture and fomenting the fear of domestic terrorism to stifle domestic dissent. So what are we to do? Why are we here? Well, it all starts, my friends, with us. Our major challenge certainly involves people out there the energy corporations, the media corporations, the politicians, to be sure. But it starts with ourselves. Our willingness to question, challenge, and resist unjust and violent policies. Our desire to take time out of each day or week to educate, advocate, or organize against what is going on and in favor of peace and justice. Our self-discipline to, take, to stay focused and not distracted by the latest political sideshow. Our self-confidence to remain vocal and active in the face of a culture that reinforces the theme of letting experts like politicians and generals decide what's good for us. Our determination